Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. My name is John Boy. I got my best friend in town with me. His name is Jake. Jake, how you doing? I'm good, Jimmer. How you doing, brother? I'm good. I was trying to cue up the song. We don't have it queued up, but a little Talking Baseball. This is a terrible version. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Should this be our theme song? We haven't decided on this. I mean, wouldn't it be bad? Because it's like a real song. We'll just do that 15 seconds. Welcome to Talking Baseball. This is the first episode we're streaming live on YouTube for our Patreons. It should be up on all podcast apps soon. Every Monday, every Friday, we will be coming to you. We uh, have some experience in the podcast world. We have a Talking Yanks podcast. That's right. We are Yankees fans. I think uh, we won't be the Yankee fans you expect us to be, which is a good thing. Uh, so there's that. And we have a bunch of podcasts on the network. This is our newest endeavor. We are excited. We've been putting a lot of work into it. Jake, how are you? I'm you got good. anything you need to say to the people? I'm good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm Yankees fan. I don't know what you're talking about. I think... Uh I think the people will find I'm just a neutral baseball fan with no biases at all. Go Rocks? Uh, huge Rockies fan, huge Blue Jays fan. I mean, I, I got the ink on my skin for a reason. Um, and yeah, man, it's exciting. We, uh, I've, we've always kind of been baseball nuts. Um, I think it's, it's kind of funny how the life cycle comes in with baseball a little bit. Like, I don't know, when... You, you start out working in the real world, you don't watch as much baseball as you used to when you were living a fake life, whether as a kid, high school, college, whatever it may be. And now uh, we got sucked into this Yankees world, and now we're in baseball world, and I, I think we're going to let it rip. I think uh, our, our voices is what baseball is looking for, man. Baseball's still cool and fun and like a good time. But, I mean, even you and I were getting fed up with, uh, and, well, I guess we'll start here, but the, the ESPN broadcast of last night's baseball Do- Dodgers. game, Dodgers-Red Sox, last year's World Series goes 12 innings, and they were just Whoa. leaning so far into the, like, oh, my God, 12 innings, we're still here. Are they going to turn the lights off? And it's like, it's kind of cool, though. The baseball. This is a. I don't want to get on my soapbox. Yeah, let's don't at do the one. whole tangent. Let's anyway, <laughs> baseball is a problem where the people that have the most influence uh, about baseball downplay it all the time and say it's this boring, terrible sport. And it's like you have all the authority Man. to spread the cool and the fun, and we have a Sunday night <laughs> baseball game tied up in the 12th inning with with some weird plays at the plate and outs on third and it's like an interesting game and the crew was talking about how brutal it was and we should just do ties and like like, oh my god think about this if that was like a sunday night basketball game and it was lebron and Kawhi, and they were in like triple overtime like everyone would be on twitter like get over here now like these guys are doing it Meanwhile, <laughs> on the broadcast, the broadcast, they're basically saying we're trying to get out of here. When's the Who concert? So, I don't know. I think uh, I think our intros there. And I at th- one point, at one point on the broadcast, yes, Mendoza and Vestirian, how you say his name? Yeah, I don't know. You're around it. Uh, contemplated whether or not the fans that are attending the twelfth inning of the tied game right. should leave early so they don't miss their trains. And right. that's what they said out loud on the broadcast. And what a bad message. They the said, message should be, I, I can't believe anyone would leave their seat with a game like this going on. They, that's what the message would be. And they, they turn it to A-Rod, and he's like, I think he should bunt here. Yeah. Let's get A-Rod, back to the game back action. Back to the game. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then the Dodgers scored, and they were like, do you think Red Sox fans are cheering so they could get out of here? And it's like, wow. Yeah, that sounds like a Red Sox fan to me. They, what a terrible broadcast. They love a loss. So there we are. So anyway, let's get back. hot takes and rants. That's we, what we Thank got. you for tuning in, checking us out, giving us a chance. We have a ton of fun segments. We did two practice episodes. We we Every segment we did, we liked. We'll, we'll get your feedback. Eventually, we're going to need your help getting a... Uh, because it's impossible to watch all, every game in baseball. We did the math on it. It's like actually impossible. Yeah. It's like 30-something hours every day of baseball. So 
we're going to try and uh, gain as much knowledge. And this is how this works is every Monday we're going to recap the weekend series. Every Friday we'll recap the weekday series. And that's pretty standard formula right there. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And let's just get straight into it, Jake. We have your National League report. It's going to be brought to you by Jake Storielli. Jake, what happened this weekend in the National League? James, National League report. Atlanta, Hotlanta Braves, they sweep the Padres out in San Diego. All of them were close games. Tough start for the Fathers out of the All-Star break. A couple good pitching performances in Atlanta. The Nationals take two out of three from the Phillies. Strasburg, Corbin show. They do their thing. Uh, Michael Franco saves the Phils with a walk-off in the last game. Mets win the final two games of their series against the Florida Fishies. The Cubbies bring their brooms out after the break, sweep the Pirates in Wrigley. The Brew Crew lose two out of three to Los Hibido Gigantes, the Giants. Buster Posey, Grand Salami, and Extra is a game one. I like that. The Cardinals win the final two games of their three games set against Arizona. Tyler O'Neill, four RBIs, a.k.a. all the runs scored in game two in a win for the Cardinals. And the Reds drop two out of three to my Rockies, apparently. Coors Effect, baby. 45 combined runs in the final two games. <laughs> Two games, 45 runs. And last year's World Series, you heard us mention it, Dodgers-Red Sox split the first two games in blowouts, and then the Dodgers win the rubber match in 12 innings last night in Fenway. I'm looking at this. Great job by you, as always. Always. I'm looking at Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Let's be honest. Sometimes. I'm looking at this, Jake. Yeah. You just told us the Pirates and the Reds lost series coming out of the break. Uh-oh. The trade deadline is uh -oh. July 31st. <laughs> Uh-oh. Ticking time bomb. There's no waiver wire deadline. No. July if 31st. If the Pirates and the Reds lose their next series, they should trade. They, they, should, should? they should get pieces while they can, especially the Reds. They have a lot to offer teams. Two weeks into the deadline, away from the deadline. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, those teams needed to come out of the gates flying, and they did not. Well, and it's, man, I mean, even uh, it, it'll, the NL Central is a mess, and I don't know how it's going to sort out. Because, I mean, the Brewers, man, like they lost two out of three to the Giants. They're not going to punt. I mean, they're all in with Yelich. Like, they're, they're not going to think but, they're going anywhere. But that's the difference. The Reds, oh, the Pirates have been mentally out in my head throughout. Same with the Reds. I there was there was that stat like a week ago that the Reds were four and a half games out. No, they're not. They're four teams out from being first in their division, and I think that's the better way to look at it. The Reds have been out for me, and the Pirates. I mean, yeah, but I don't I'm think. Sorry, Uncle Rick. He loves yeah. the Pirates, but no. I think the the weirder thing is you got to think if they make the playoffs, do they have the magic to go deep? And they don't. So just don't tell that to Derek Dietrich because he got, has the magic. They got a lot of pieces. Derek I'm Dietrich saying take advantage. Take advantage of the trade deadline, uh, man. But yeah, we'll we'll get more into that earlier. The yeah. uh, the Cubs. The Cubs lost. No, what did the Cubs, Cubs swept? Cubs swept, which they needed because they they went into the out. they went into the break pretty beat up. They needed it, so they they distanced themselves from Milwaukee. It's now two and a half games in the Central, which isn't bad. And the Reds are now six and a half. They were four and a half at the break, but yeah, the Reds time to sell. You guys got pieces. Go get yourself something for the future. The West is a shit show. The Dodgers. We said this on one of our practice episodes. I think it's a great point that you had. Because Arizona, Colorado, and San Diego are all so close, n all three of them probably miss out on the wild card because they're going to spend the spend them spend the rest of this half beating each other up. Yeah, I think it's going to be a game of chicken a little bit because San Francisco they've been playing decent baseball of late, but I mean they're they're not going to get into this thing. Um, San Diego got swept; they were five hundred going in the break. Now you're forty five and forty eight, and it's like. That's going to be a tough message, but you kind of have to you, – you should still be selling what you can because you have all your young guys. Machado is going to be there next year, kind of build it up because the Dodgers are running away. Arizona and Colorado are playing a game of chicken, 
of who's going to sell off some parts. I think Zona's going to trade Cause, some people. Because my Rockies don't want to. And the Diamondbacks, man, I mean, they don't want to either. They just got Jake Lamb back. Eduardo Escobar's a good player. They sold before the season, and we saw when the Yankees went in there earlier this year when we saw them. I don't know. Arizona's looking for a fun environment and good baseball. They're not... I, I think Arizona's the kind of team that you have to think about it. If they start putting a bad product on the field, I mean, tough to go to a D-backs game. It's, lot, it's too hot. It's hot. It's way too hot. Yeah. Can you covered. imagine living in Arizona and there's no ocean? It's nice. It's a getaway. I think that's their biggest sell right now. A little <sighs> air conditioning. No, no. If it's that hot, I need an ocean. Go in the dome, baby. That's their sell. Gross. $15 for free AC. <laughs> yeah. Come, come live is. in the air conditioning. What, uh, what's going on in the American League, Jim? American League report. Here we go. The Rays and the Orioles faced off. The Rays took two out of three. They crushed them in the first game. Then they lost a close one. Yankees and the Jays were tied at one, and the Yanks win the rubber match, so the Jays and the Orioles both lose. It's kind of the story of the AL East. All the Bird teams are losing this year. Sorry to all the Birds out there. Like you said, the Red Sox lost the series to the Dodgers. Tough team to come out of the break if you're the Red Sox. you got to face the Dodgers right away, who are uh, you know one of the special teams going right now. In the Central, the Twins and the Indians faced off. The Twins run won the first two games. A good start by Bieber in the third game helped the Indians avoid the sweep. Good job, Justin Bieber. Pride of Cleveland. Oh. They're saying he's the new LeBron. Do you know you just called him Justin? Justin Bieber. Do you think he gets called a different name? Uh, Shane. <laughs> Name he's been called his whole life. You, th- how many people in the du- in the clubhouse do you think just call him Justin? They call him Biebs. You stay away from the front name. He's got the last name. It's I, been his nickname forever. You I just know, go but Biebs. You but, don't mix in the Justin. No, it's like a it's like a dig. What's up, Justin? No, that I, happens to him you a go lot. Biebs. That happens. Yeah, but that's the that's when you're being friendly. When you're being unfriendly, you call him Justin. That's what happens. Anyway, the Tigers and the Royals. In a series that no one gives a shit about. Both these teams have now combined for 62 wins, Jake. Mm, not bad. 32 and 29. <laughs> but they, uh, Detroit avoided the sweep. The Royals won. No one cares. Um, you know who had a really good start? Max Keller or something. Brad like Keller. Brad Keller. Yeah, he had a really good start. White Sox and the Athletics squared off, and the A's swept them with a weird walk-off at the end. But this is... Big for the A's, and the White Sox aren't contending, but they want to have fun. But a sweep is pretty big for the A's right now who uh, are making trades, and we'll get into that later. Mariners and the Angels faced off in an emotional set, and the Angels swept the Mariners. So good for them. Angels doing some sweeping. Astros and Rangers had a four-game set. The Rangers took the first two games, which is kind of surprising because Houston was kind of limping into the uh, – the break, but then Houston came out. They won seven to six in extras, then twelve to four in the final set. There was a walk off in there as well. The standings didn't move that much. The Yankees are still in first in the East, up six. Minnesota Twins still up six and a half. They actually helped themselves out, beating Cleveland, who's in second place. And Houston's up six in the West. Oakland gained some ground with the sweep. I mean, Oakland and the Angels both swept, and they're still six and eleven games back. The wild card, the AL is really a three-team race in our brains. Maybe four for the wild card, but that's what happened. Nothing, nothing catastrophic in the standings happened uh, first game out. Yeah, don't tell that to our White Sox fans because they were they're getting that wild card. No, they're not. Um, but they, at, again, like this sweep for the White Sox is probably a good thing for them. Um, they they dropped to eight and a half out of the wild card. You can't. The White Sox came into this year. They wanted Harper. They wanted Machado. They signed their cousins and brothers, literally. Um, and I, I think for the White Sox, like you guys had a fun first half, and a lot of good things happened for you. Juan Moncada had a good first half. That's good news because he was pretty bad before that. Uh, what's his name? Giolito. He had a really good first half. You've got some things to build around now. Tim Anderson, Jose Abreu. They established this culture in the dugout, which is key. Good times. Um, Kopech will come back next year. I don't know. Like for the White Sox, I I think (laughs) 
if any of our White Sox fans are listening, they may not be pleased, but they may be very pleased because if you're a smart White Sox fan, you're not going to jump LAA, Texas, Boston, Cleveland, Oakland, Tampa to get into the wild card. So we have the same take, basically. I said it with the Reds and the Pirates. You're saying it with the White Sox. Losing out of the break was probably better for them. Well, uh, but not really fanhood because fans want to win, but uh, organizationally, like, all right, good. Let's not break our backs to win right now because trading and establishing for next year has always been the goal. Right. We were kind of got a little sidetracked with this winning. Doesn't that ha- doesn't that suck when you get sidetracked by winning? Sidetracked by winning. The Texas Rangers asked them about it. They're fifty and forty four, and Lance Lynn looks incredible. You might hear him mention. They later have so on. many pieces to trade. They, the Rangers have so many pieces to trade. If they were out of it, they got Lance Lynn. They got Hunter Pence. They got uh, Mike Miner. But they're gonna they're being sidelined by winning. And they have they to might be now. they might be the team that most teams are rooting for to sell because they have the most pieces yeah but they're getting fucked because they keep winning yeah well good for them and i i think uh i I guess on the other side of that like i like what texas is doing texas had a winning culture a few years ago the ron washington years and they're doing good things and like it it makes sense slash it well i don't want to say it makes sense because i saw lance lynn throwing 98 on the black the other day and that we haven't seen that since his st louis days kind of um but like it does make it's not like you're looking around and like all right our guys are doing bad but we're still winning games like pence had a huge first half lance lynn mike minor had huge first halves and they've got the young talent we saw joey gallo flaunted in the all-star game so um I don't know what what else do we need from these series from the weekend. No, nah, that's all. Let's move into the yeah the major storylines and the biggest one. And this seems a little old now because baseball moves so fast. Is that the Angels had a no hitter on their first home game? Everyone's wearing the number forty five, and the numbers surrounding it are insane. Trout hit a home run that was four hundred fifty four feet, which in parentheses Statcast is bullshit, and I don't believe it, but. That's cool that that's what we get to say happened. Yeah. The no-hitter, combined no-hitter is wild. And then the other thing was the last time a no-hitter happened in California was on the day of Skagg's birth. So emotional, weird. I once brought I once brought like something like this to my history teacher. It was like that Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy, their secretaries right. had the different names and there's a uh, and uh And my teacher looked at me and said, you can find weird numbers about anything in the world if you want. This isn't interesting to me. And I said, oh, okay." So he kind of bummed me out. And now I have a bummer brain about things like this. Yeah, uh, I'll say this because I I think that bummer brain is true because you saw there was a lot of people on the Internet that were like, all right, well, there was one there is one run nine hits or whatever it was, and they started adding up the numbers. And it's like, yeah, if you start reaching around the scoreboard... The birthday one's cool. The birthday one is super cool. The um, uh, the 454 home run, StatCast is a load of shit anyway, so... Half cool, like it. I mean, the biggest thing is, you have a field of people wearing 45 for a pitcher who passed away. You throw the no-hitter. I mean, it's it was unbelievable. It's 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 incredibly emotional. His his wife or mom throughout the first pitch. Yeah, yeah, um, it's incredible. And it's yeah, it's just it's some it's the beauty of sports. It's people that people that don't like sports, which is fine. If that's not your prerogative, that's okay. But sports is the original reality television. Sports is that. If you watch any reality TV or anything around reality reality TV, sports is that. Um, yeah, and the o- the only thing that was comparable, and I, I mean, people were posting this, so this is an original thing, but the D. Gordon homer after Jose Fernandez passed. I mean, one of the least power hitting players of all time hits a homer and starts crying around the bases, and you're just like Jesus. So it's uh, it was cool power of sports and all that. Um, and uh, I think uh, I think Felix Pena might hear him later. He uh, he was seven innings of that no hitter, so. Uh, shout out to him, but doesn't get much cooler than that. Yeah, well, the Rays almost tried to make it even worse. Tried to one up them, and it's like, that yo, come so on, the Rays. That, That's come pretty on, rude. Rays had a had a perfect combined perfect game going, and it's yeah. like Rays the this is the Angels moment. So why don't you back first? Uh, fir- first hitter in the ninth, and I, I think uh, 
you and I talked about the All Star break a little bit, and we wanted it longer, and then it happened, and we were like, we want it shorter. And I think we definitely saw a little bit this weekend of rust. I think it's oh, yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy that you I know, wanted to do a big report on all the starting All Stars. I saw Freddie Freeman, Alonzo uh, had terrible uh, weeks. So I wanted to do a report on that and see like how the hitters did, but then I was like, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I think there was, I think there was, uh, if I were to guess, I think there was slightly better pitching performances, but it's funny how you hear the general lines, creatures of habit, and then you kind of see it and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Jim, I think the other news from this weekend, and you saw us starting to hint in it in our AL and NL reports. Trade deadline is sneaking up big time. We had the first couple of trades. Andrew Kashner stays in the AL Beast. He goes from the Oreos to the Red Sox. He's been pitching well lately. Couple 17-year-olds <laughs> going for Andrew Kashner. Uh, any Elio Prado or Nolberth Romero fans out there, um, I get ready for Baltimore in six years if either of them are good. And Homer Bailey gets traded straight up for minor league infielder Kevin Merrill. Yeah, let's stay on Kashner first. Sure. Talk about this. Kashner, his ERA is not great on the on his career or this season, but he's been pitching really good. His last seven games are really, really good. He, he, this this is weird. Yeah. Kashner, there was an article that came out that said he would almost refuse a lot of trades to leave Baltimore because he likes Baltimore so much. Right. Also, when he was with Miami, Don Mattingly's in Miami, and he makes his players shave his beard, and Kashner hated it. He said it's part of him. He's, he couldn't pitch without right. his beard. So the fact he gets to go to the Red Sox and be his ugly self and gets to be like ugly himself up with a weird haircut and a beard, I'm happy for him there. He found a home. Right. He does have another year on his contract, so the Red Sox got him for this year and next season. And the return being only two 17-year-olds – is kind of, it's not like shocking, but it's like, man, people really overvalue trades. And I'm not saying anyone thought Cashner was going to be worth a lot, but I guarantee you any mock trade the Orioles fans were looking at or Red Sox fans for Cashner included something better than these two 17 year old prospects that are complete. They have value, but like complete crapshoots. Yeah. If it was a true rental, this would make 100% sense. The fact they have them for next year, too. Maybe like someone who's in double A, Jake. These guys aren't even in A ball. It's not like right. they're seventeen year olds who are like, flying up the charts. No. Dominican they're, Rookie League. Dominican Rookie League. They haven't even really started their professional careers yet. Yeah. It's there's a there's a lot of interesting things going on. So you talk about Red Sox fans talking about what they'd pay for Andrew Kashner. I don't think they were talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Andrew Kashner wasn't being mentioned. And I think that's kind of the funny dynamic with this is that Andrew Kashner seven starts ago kind of wasn't a trade piece. Like, if you traded for Andrew Kashner, your team wouldn't be too excited about it. And you mentioned that second year of the contract. Um, that's actually part of the risk of this trade, and I think people are overlooking that. That being said, because I don't want to come off as Yankee-centric, Kashner has been really good his past seven starts. He's in the AL East, so he's been doing it there, and that's always a big thing for AL East people. Um, the I think it's interesting that that extra year is a coin flip for both teams. I mean, if Andrew Kashner comes over and he's the Andrew Kashner that's a career 5 ERA guy, I mean, that becomes a hindrance to the Red Sox. If he comes out and he pitches well, you know, that's a bonus for the Red Sox, and they did really well in this. So I think... Uh, you know, I think there's the normal coin flip of when a guy comes over, what are they going to look like? Um, I think both teams kind of flipped the coin here, though. <laughs> I think I think the Orioles were kind of betting on his whole body of work and saying, hey, we, we like these two kids and we're doing a big rebuild here in Baltimore. We'd rather have these two 17-year-olds in-house um, than whatever Andrew Kashner can provide us. And, I mean, Andrew Kashner, if he has two bad starts, what's his return? Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like it for both teams. And I mean, I say that again with uh, with very little hopes that Elio Prado or Nolberth Romero make it to the majors and the Sox bring in an arm, which kind of moves their chain of events with Evaldi going to the closer. And well, that maybe the big it can question. line things up for them. How much does this help the Red Sox? Because 
the biggest thing this does is allows them for Valdi to go become their closer or, you know, a big part of their bullpen, which is a role that his stuff plays, but we've never seen him do it. He's never been that dude to get handed, like the mental aspect of it. Right. He's never been that dude to get handed the ball. So, like, Kashner helps a starting rotation. He wouldn't be in the playoff rotation for them. It's just kind of a cog to eat some innings, but it really allows Evaldi to go to the bullpen. But is that going to be a success? And then is this the move that the Red Sox make? Because if this is the move, then that's basically the season and they need to do more moves. So if I was a Red Sox fan, I think you can, you can hopefully say that they're going to try and do more to help the Red Sox, the front office, but that's what you thought in the offseason. They didn't get anyone. Now you, you promised Evaldi he'd be a starting pitcher for you when you signed him. Now he's in the bullpen and you had traded for another starting pitcher. Evaldi's like, yo, dude, I'm the starting pitcher you traded for or you signed. So I don't know. A bit weird. Yeah. And so the, the Cashner stats, which we we read, the past, his past five starts, 32 innings pitched, uh, 141 ERA. Before that, he was 504 flat ERA on the season. Um, so, hey, maybe he figured something out and he's going. I mean, he's been around for a while, so it's it's not like he's a young guy figuring it out. And, yeah, I, I, I mean, my counter to your argument is if you're a Red Sox fan, you hope this isn't the last trade. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't think that's rude to say. Um if you're an optimist, though, you can say, I mean, there's there's a bullpen effect that happens when you add a guy. So, And, I mean, say Kashner's solid, or even if he's not that solid, but he's around and he's your fifth starter. If Evaldi can go and he can close, which, I mean, his stuff can play up in the bullpen because he's always had that fastball, then if he locks down that closer role, which has been a problem for the Sox all year, Brazier moves down, the other guys all move down a notch and lower leverage innings. So there can be effect there, and this can work. Um, I think it is a little bit more of a Hail Mary than Sox fans would want, um, but they got their ring last year, and I think they want to stay under that salary cap number. So that's how that's how baseball kind of operates now. Yeah, luxury, luxury yeah. tax. Yeah, the other trade, Homer Bailey to the A's. This is just the prospect that they brought someone in is probably right. exciting for Oakland. Yeah. They sweep the White Sox, and they have a walk-off, and they make a trade. So right now the vibe in Oakland is, hey, we're doing this. Like, this yeah. is one of the seasons we're going to try to win. How about that? Once every five years this shit happens, let's do it. Homer Bailey's not the sexiest name anymore. Well, actually... As a name, Homer Bailey Homer is Bailey. pretty. Homer Bailey. Homer is, Bailey is pretty great name. Yeah, but he's getting older. We did see him, Jake, uh, pitch a gem versus the Yankees earlier. Six innings pitch, one earned run, and he looked good doing it. I remember that. He's got what has he got? A sinker ball. He's well. Uh- this year so far, 90, 90 innings pitched, eighty one strikeouts. So his his uh his strikeout per nine has kind of moved up. Um, and you wonder, I mean, did did the A's see something? Is is this uh is this gonna be a move that we're like, wow, how about those A's? They made a nice move for Homer Bailey, or were the A's saying, hey, we've got an MLB arm here that you know we might be able to get some good innings out of, and he's actually. He's had a really good stretch recently too. He had a he had one bad start um he, within these in his last 5 games started. So both these starters with their last 5 are pretty impressive. Um 29 innings pitched, 248 ERA, 26 strikeouts. So um I don't know. I I think this was both of these moves might have been kind of anticipatory of not the busiest trade deadline. And kind of two teams that were like, we're not making the big move this year. So if the best arms available are Marcus Stroman and then maybe Mad Bum, if he's willing to come to your teams, maybe these two teams were like, we just want to get ahead of this and we want to get an arm to help get us through. Well, and the, they got Cashner and Bailey. These are two guys that are not going to be on the playoff roster, like, you know, getting starts. Maybe Cashner moves the bullpen. But the A's had a big opening with Frankie Montes going down for uh, PEDs. Cheating. Cheating. So now they need another starter. Illegal. They, I mean, but Fires, Anderson, um, even, even um, who's this, Bassett, and that crazy. And then they have the, the opener, 
Who's that crazy dude with the mustache? Mengden. Mengden. Dan- Daniel Mengden. They, gave, they pieced together starts. But, I mean, good for these guys. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, good for baseball and good for us on this show because it's a good appetizer of trades yeah. before we get into the meal, real, real stuff. And uh, I think, Jim, um, I mean, do we want to do the whole trade deadline spiel? Yeah, I did a lot. I put a lot of effort. I, I won't go as long as uh, Jake's probably scared I'm going to go on this. No. But I did. I'm a- excited for how excited you are about this. I did a lot of research because this is what this is what spurned this off. So this is World Series deadline moves let, of the past years. I'll let, I want to lay the groundwork a little bit. But I, you didn't really understand where I was coming from yesterday. So I'm, no, I did. I think I'm I'm less surprised than you are. But we'll I'm see. I'm not surprised. We'll see. Okay, I guess that's what's surprising. Zero, to I'm me. zero. <laughs> I'm zero surprised. I'm proving a point. Exactly. So. Uh, on Yankees Twitter, this one of the sexiest things to yell is the fact that you know this team isn't where it needs to be. We need this team's not complete yet. We got to get another arm. And I think what got to Young James here was the fact that every team at the deadline goes out and makes move. There's not a complete team at the deadline, whether it's smaller things, bigger things. Most of the time, pretty significant things, every team makes a move. So with that, yeah, so I give I, it to you, James. I went through the past eight World Series winners. I think eight. I was going to do ten. I got tired. It was a lot of work. Basically, I want to say what Jake said. Every team changes. And then I just wanted to see, like, all right, well, the World Series winners, let's see what moves they made and how much it actually helped them. And some, it helped a ton. And some it didn't. And it was interesting to see what moves they made that kind of just like didn't or did. So 2018, the Red Sox added Steve Pierce, Nathan Avaldi, and Ian Kinsler. Ian Kinsler became a defensive replacement. He got he got innings in the in the playoffs, but he wasn't a hero. Steve Pierce, World Series MVP, yep. was great for them from the day he stepped on the field, platooned at first with Moreland, and was just phenomenal. Nathan Avaldi, great. He went like those six extra innings. Ate a lot of innings, uh, pitched really well, came out of the bullpen, had a 1.61 ERA in the postseason. So the 2018 Red Sox, their additions helped them. Pierce and Avaldi helped them win the World Series. Oh, yeah. 2017 Astros, you got Justin Verlander is the biggest piece. I mean, that's the nuke. That that's is the uh, nuke. Six. That, that changed the history of baseball. He was available to any team that wanted him. Yeah. Because his contract looked like an albatross. I, and again, if... If he went to the Yankees or the Red Sox or or the Dodgers, I mean, I think we're talking about any of those teams as starting a mini dynasty, and now Houston has them. Yeah, so he was amazing. Six games in the in the postseason. Justin Verlander went six games, thirty six point two innings pitched, two point two one ERA. They went five and one in his starts in the playoffs. You, they don't win that World Series without him. I no. can say that firmly. They also tried out Francisco Liriano. He did not work out. And Cameron Mabin, they picked up off waivers as well. No one else wanted him. And he was a defensive replacement that played in a lot of games, defensive replacement, but still. They picked him up, and he played a part. The 2016 Cubs was wild. Their bullpen was so bad that from June 20th, they scratched and clawed and just picked up relievers left and right. They picked up Mike Montgomery, who actually helped them a lot in the regular season. He came out of the pen. He started games, 17 games, 2-8, two, 2 ERA in the regular season. He appeared in 11 games in the postseason um, and only lost or furthered the lead in three of them. So in, uh, what is that, eight games, he did his job in the postseason. There's not that many games. He almost pitched in all of them. Araldis Chapman's the biggest one here. But there was other guys. There was like Joel Peralta, not Joel Peralta. There was some other that I didn't, I didn't write down their names. They tried. They made like one or two appearances, and they kicked him to the curb. They finally got their dude in Araldis Chapman. And they, I mean, this was the Magic's cu- Magic Cubs year, and they finally hit their tipping point. Because you're right, we did leave a couple names out that you'd remember as journeyman type reliever that the Cubs were like, hey, if we could get a couple good months out of you, that'd be huge for us. They finally caved, and Araldis Chapman was available because the Yankees were out of it that year, one of the few years they were, and they got Glaber Torres out of that. Um, so, and now we're, we're reaping the benefits, but the Cubs, the Cubs hand was kind of forced being the Chicago Cubs and what their bullpen had done that year. But 
I mean, I I think I mean in in these teams, <laughs> in these three teams alone, there's now been a World Series MVP, um, Justin Verlander, who I just said changed the course of baseball, and Araldis Chapman, who at the time was as dominant as closer there was in the sport. In the regular season, Chapman appeared in 24 games after the trade. Uh, he blew one game. In the in the postseason, he appeared in 13 games. Madden abused him. He blew two. One was game seven, so a lot of people think, like, oh, he sucked. He's pretty good. Yeah. He pitched a lot in in situations he had never pitched. Joe Smith was another guy. He he had 12 oh, scoreless Smith. 12 scoreless innings in the regular season, Jake, and didn't make the postseason roster. So it's tough, that postseason crunch. All right, here we go. 2015 Royals. Yep. They added Johnny Cueto, Ben Zobrist, and Johnny Gomes. Johnny Gomes did nothing and didn't appear in the postseason. But at that point, he was like a lucky charm because he had been on so many World Series teams right. in a row, Red Sox, Giants, whatever, all that. Cueto, 13 games started, and the team went 4-9. He had a 4-7-6 ERA. He did start four playoff games, though. Two good, one bad, and then one great playoff game in the World Series. A complete game, one earned run. That's what gets remembered. So that's huge. Ben Zobrist, World Series MVP. In the postseason, he had a 880 OPS, 365 on base percentage. They traded for him. He becomes the World Series MVP. So now we've got the list of people now. If you're, if you're talking about like Steve Pierce, Justin Verlander, Araldis Chapman, Ben Zobers. Those guys didn't, weren't on the team at the deadline or at the, tra- at the break. Two, two, two World Series MVPs and arguably one of the most dominant starting pitchers and one of the most dominant relievers there's ever been. Yeah. 2014 Giants. This one was an interesting. Jake Peavy. That was their only move, Jake. They traded yeah. for Jake Peavy. And in 12 starts after the trade, he went 8 and 4 or the team went 8 and 4 in his starts with a 2.17 ERA. He was bad in the World Series though, like really bad in the World Series. They lost both his starts, so they won the World Series despite his starts. But I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. They had to add more people. They called up Joe Panic who right. became their second baseman and uh, cog in their lineup. Cog. And Belt came off the DL. He was riddled with injuries that year. In September, he finally got healthy. He hit safely in all seven games in the World Series. Yeah, I guess, I guess and this is where you and I start to veer a little differently because for me, the trade deadline is showing your team that you want to win. It's your GM going out and adding a player to yeah. improve your team. That's a That's a big thing without the team. With within the team, excuse me, and then Jake Peavy. I, I know. I guess the world. What happens in the postseason is kind of coin flippish for me. Like we we've seen guys like Alex Rodriguez have a bad postseason. Mm-hmm. Like it's a it's a seven game set. Any player in baseball can have a bad seven games, and so that's why. Like I still count Jake Peavy as like a huge trade deadline acquisition. He went eight and four, two one seven ERA. The team went eight and four. In in his games, excuse yeah, 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 yeah. me, which still that's, that's better. That's really good. Yeah. Um, and his two one seven ERA is still his. So I I still think like, obviously like I mean Steve Pierce winning the World Series MVP. I mean that is what it is forever and and good for him. But I mean Jake Peavy's a guy who won a Cy Young. He was he was off of his Cy Young pace at this point, but he came in and he was a huge factor for him. So, I mean, it in in my head, it still counts just as much as everything else because yeah. it changes the way your whole season develops. It changes who else is throwing innings. It changes the way your bullpen works. It changes everything. Yeah, and and the point I would make here is that even though they didn't trade for Joe Panic or Belt, they didn't have them at the break. If they didn't right. think they could call them up or that they were going to be healthy, they would have made a trade for those positions, most yeah. likely. The 2013 Red Sox, uh, who they traded for Jake Peavy as well, and he was not really good for them. Um, he was bad in the in the CS in the World Series. They traded for Quentin Berry as a defensive replacement, and he made the roster in every postseason series. That's kind of my. And then they called up Xander Bogarts and Brandon Workman, who were clutch for them. Uh, Xander Bogarts was a young dude. He had an 893 OPS in the postseason. After he had 44 at bats in the regular season, Jake, and 27 in the postseason. He wasn't even like he was a September call up that became a true cock in their uh, postseason run. Workman had eight and 8.2 scoreless innings. Uh, 
and that was that. The next one, and this is the last one I do because I know I've done a lot of info now. The 2012 Giants, Marco Scudero, they traded for him in 61 games post-trade. He had an 859 OPS and a 385 on base percentage in the postseason, 377 on base percentage, 767 OPS in 16 games. He was kind of like the dude, not the dude, but he was a, a, a part yeah. of that World Series win, Marco Scudero. So every team has no team has just sat still at the in the last couple of years, sat still at the break and said, now we're rolling with what we have and won the World Series. Every World Series team has made additions or brought someone up. The 2009 Yankees are the biggest team that didn't do anything, really. And they also spent the most money in free agency ever, I believe, before that. Yeah. So, but um, Defensive replacement is my biggest thing. We got Quentin Berry, who made postseason starts. We had, um, who else was there? There was Chris Coughlin. He became a defensive Cameron replacement Mabin. for the Cubs. Cameron Mabin, Ian Kinsler. So good teams that get get defensive replacements. The Yankees went out and did it with Echeverria, but they didn't win last year. But yeah, like, that's a thing. I, I I think you could also say. I mean, there might be some teams that already have that guy, like the teams that haven't traded for defensive replacements on this list. You might already have your guy. That's your speedster defense guy. Yeah. Terrence Gore. Um, Terrence Gore. Shout out. So yeah, if if that's what you guys wanted on on the first episode, a little Marco Scudero talk. We got it. Um, and yeah, if you're about, if you are got your Twitter fingers out right now and you're about to say, there's no way our team makes the World Series without making a move, well... Every team makes moves. Ev- every team will make a move. Yeah. So, so there you go. There you go. That's our big conversation for today. Now we're going to get into some fun stuff to recap the series. A couple segments. A couple segments to recap the series that were. First one, we got Jake's standout performance. Floor is yours, Jake. These want, three games after the break, who want, impressed you? I wanted you to make a nice song out of it or something. Jake's standout performance. All right, I lied. I didn't want that. Um, Jim, I went with Josh Donaldson, the bringer of rain, as everyone calls him. Hey, bringer of rain. Hey, but now batting the bringer Here's of Here's your coffee, rain. bringer of rain. <laughs> Good luck out there. Um Josh Donaldson and and my Atlanta Braves, man. They, they've still got the lead in the ALEs. Um, in a three-game set, he had six runs, three home runs, six RBIs. One of those games was a two-home run, four-RBI game. Um, without those, they wouldn't have won that game. I know that's a hot take. Um, Josh Donaldson, a guy that can get um, hot in a hurry. Hot in a hurry? In Atlanta, that's pretty easy to do. Oh, yeah. You could start sweating pretty good down there, um, especially dog days. Whoo! Starts one real good. August in Atlanta. Um, Sounds like hell. He uh, he plays an important role in this team. Does he? He does, Jim. He splits up Freddie Freeman and Nick Markakis, your guy. Uh, Greek guard, Greek God of Walks Part Two. Um, and Josh Donaldson's just having a really good year. He's he's got twenty one home runs on the season now. Um, on pace to land in the 30s, which he was at a couple years ago. And I don't know, Josh Donaldson has had a lot of injuries. There were some people that didn't know he got the one-year big money. People were scared to give him long-term because they don't know if his body was going to hold up anymore. So, uh, And I just think it was a big... The Nationals are coming. The Nationals and Phillies are coming for the Braves. Um the, the Nationals have the pitching, and they've kind of turned their season around quietly. Like they're, The Nationals were sellers three weeks ago, and now people are on the Nationals train. And guess what? If they make the playoffs, even if they make the wild card game, Scherzer. Yeah, the Nationals are, are – they sh- I mean – And if they – and if – they do, then Strasburg's having a good year, and Corbin is too. So the Nationals are a, a serious what to watch for. And the Phillies, I mean, Harper had a bad first half. Are they going to get it going? Um, so I think it was important for the Braves to come out and start the second half with a winning series um, to show, because when they start bleeding, those other teams are looking for them. Uh, so a little love for hey, it, Bringer of Rain. Bring me some rain, please. That's why they brought him to Atlanta to cool off. Yeah, in the summer. Wow. Fetch me some rain. Fetch me my wine. Jimmy, who's your standout performance? My standout performance is a guy named Philip Irvin. Pierv. Pierv. You ever heard of him? Perv. You ever heard of Philip Irvin? Yeah. 
Philip Irvin, first round pick for the Reds back in 2013, 27th overall. Played the last two years, not a lot, but he's having a good season right now, Jake. Outfielder, yeah. pinch hitter. He's having a good year right now. 356 batting average, 415 on base percentage. Not the most at bats because I think he missed all of May and April. Oh my God. Yeah, he's overslept. But it's his birthday. Today's his birthday? Yeah. Well, that's why he's my standout performance. He wow. went on July 12th. He went six for six, Jake. Yeah. One double, one triple, three RBIs, one run scored, and one stolen base. Now here, as was in cores, I believe. Yeah, and it was so a wild a, game. It was like a sixteen. There to was something. a couple cores effect game. Forty five runs in the final two. But games. here's what's impressive. All right, he had never had more than three hits in a game in the MLB, and he only had three hits once in 2017. Only no other player has had six hits in a game this season. In 2018, only one player did it. Springer. In 2017, only one player did it, Rendon. So this is a cool feat. Not a lot of people have six hits in a game. He went six for six. Here's what's even more impressive in my mind. Okay. He His first hit, single. His next hit, triple. His next hit, double. Home run away from the cycle right. in a slop fest game. That's like 16 to nine right. final score or whatever. You'd expect... Swing He's for just the fence swinging for time. the fences every time, get the cycle. He has one home run this season, yeah. not his game. You know what he does? He goes single, single, single. Slapping around, You know what's man. more impressive than a cycle? Going six for six. Yeah. Happens less. Yeah, would have liked to have that home run, though. Um, yeah, good for Phil Irvin. You wonder what he's thinking, former first-round pick. Um, he's probably wondering when his on mom's going to text team. him for his birthday. He's probably hoping a couple of these guys get traded so he can get some run because he's 27 today. Yeah. Um, so late late blooming. Um, ooh, and Jim, I've got good news. Sometimes we run into some some bad Twitter handles and stuff on this show. Okay. Mr. Magic Irvin. Mr. Magic Irvin. That's pretty good. It's a little stealing. It's a little stealing, a little stolen. but... Stolen magic. Magic is so well known that I think you can spin off that. So I I like it. Okay, it's better than Craig Biggio or Kevin Biggio's. Oh my god, doing it big, Geo. Doing it big, Geo. Time. That's a uh, that's tough, Kevin. Sorry, sorry for throwing you under the bus because it probably won't be the last time, Cav Daddy. Good for Phil. Good for Phil. Good for Phil. Jim. Now I think it's time your favorite segment of the show. Slump walk. Slump walk. Damn, got me. Yeah. Who do you got on Slump Watch, Jim? I got Dwight Smith Jr. from yeah. our favorite Baltimore Orioles. Yurt. Baltimore Orioles. Dwight Smith Jr., one of the worst arms I've seen in left field to date. Yeah. We're not talking about his arm, Jake. We're talking about the thing that he holds. It's an extension of his arm. It's the bat. The bat. The bat. It's been brutal. He has zero hits in his last 26 plate appearances. That's not good. That's about as high as you can count. It's not good. Zero hits. He's got two walks. Good for you. You know what? We need to shame those pitchers. Can you bring that up? Can you find me the two pitchers that have walked Dwight Smith? No. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. All right. It's a friendly show. No, those pitchers need Except to get... Except for Kevin Bishio. Those, those pitchers need to get shamed, and I'll shame them eventually throughout the show. Okay. O for his last... Oh, it's not. It's o, o for his last 24. No hits, last 26 play appearances. I dive deeper, Jake. Okay. Three hits in his last 30... In his last 43 plate appearances. Yeah. And in his last 43 plate appearances, still only those two walks. So those pitchers, I'm coming for you. Yeah. Once I quit reading these stats, I'm going to go. 10 strikeouts in his last 40 plate appearances. An 079 average in his last 43 plate appearances. Hasn't gotten a hit with the All-Star break now. Splitting this up. He hasn't got a hit in over a week. And he's been playing every day. So Dwight Smith Jr., you are officially... On my slump watch. Before you go hunt down those pitchers, g- give me your next one because I can I can build off of it and while while you hunt down those two pitchers. Okay. I hope it's the same guy. Oh my god, I didn't even think of that. Oh my god. All right, the next my next slump watch is, and this one's a little tongue in cheek, a little more fun. Yeah. Pete Alonso, the home run derby champ, Mister Serious Pete, one 
hit this series coming after the break. Now, did he get jinxed? Because you know he got ten at bats, Jake. Yeah. One hit, seven Ks. Yeah. Wow. Got that home run swing. So as you go hunt down these pitchers um, that walk Dwight Smith Jr., Jimmy, Vlad Jr., I didn't have him on here, two for 12 since the All-Star break. So if, you, if you're one of those people that want to hunt down the home run derby, Vlad's two for 12, Pete's one for 10. Um, I didn't have Vladdy Jr. on my slump watch, but I wanted to feed the beast on that one. Um, my slump watch, Jim, I'll, I'll hit him quick. Benny and the Jets, Ben Benintendi, he goes one for 13 to start after the All-Star break. He's kind of had a rough year. Um, he used to be one of the scariest cogs in that Red Sox lineup. Some good pitching on the Dodgers, though. Uh, yeah, but the Sox put up, put up a couple runs. Um, and one for 13 is bad. And we, we've got a Dodger. Who walked Dwight Smith Jr.? Guess who was the first walk I found? It's a guy I don't like. Uh, Snell, I don't know. Same team. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys on the race. You're not. Yarbrough. Yarbrough, nice. The slowest Got pitcher cute. in the world. Y- Nibbles Yarbrough. and cute. pitches so slow. And the other one was Aaron Sanchez. Okay. Who was walking everyone. Everybody. 20 walks and six starts. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So, okay. Yarbrough well. and, and Sanchez, you've been shamed. Yarbrough, you've been shamed. Um, all right. And my, my other quick hitters I had on Slump Watch, Joey Wendell, he went two for 14. Why he's on there is against the Orioles, and they put up big runs. So that's tough. Didn't when, get invited when, to the party. When all your teammates are filling up the stat sheet, a couple of those teammates we're going to talk about later, uh, that's a tough look for Joey Wendell. Corey Seager, who was in that Red Sox series, he went 0 for 11, no walks. That's a tough look. Yeah, his uh, brother texted him and was like, yo, yikes, yo, dude, what's going on? Copying my stuff. We've had the Seager bros. Both Seagers have made the slump wow. watch three episodes um, in. And then I just thought Trey Mancini, he also went 0 for 11, no walks. So th- those two guys tied for the most at-bats without getting on base. So I thought they should be mentioned. Bummer. And uh, I think we've only got one pitcher on here, Jim, if you want to go get him. Yeah, it's a light. It's a light slump, slump watch. Jordan Zimmerman uh, has allowed seven earned runs in his last two starts. Boston and then the Royals, uh, 13 hits and then eight hits. So Tough to put a pitcher on the slump watch with just the series after the all-star break. Yeah, but it can delve a little yeah. farther than just the series. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, only four strikeouts in his last two starts and 14 earned runs. So, Z- Zimmerman, we're watching your next start closely. You've been warned. Now, I think, well, I was going to say we could go into the fun stuff, but Slump Watch is pretty fun. But the positive fun stuff, Jim, Dirt Nasties and Fuego. That means on fire, Baby, and, like way go. And I'm going to start off with my guy who was actually my my standout performance last week, Yuli Gurriel. I'm just going to do it quick because he's kept it rolling. It's now eight homers in nine games, two more homers from the four games this weekend. Jim, in 15 games, his OPS went from 681, so a below league average player, to 811, so an above, a, above league average player. So Yuli Gurriel killing it. And I, I've... I mean, I've got a couple I want to rip, Jim, but I'll I'll mention my Rays. Rip them. I'll mention my rookie Rays, Mike Brusso and Nate Lau, or Low. Which one's Low and which one's Lau? I think Nate Low. Don't know. Brandon Lau on the Rays. Uh, so one official of our Rays answer, fans. Official right answer, now. I'm not sure. Um, two rookie Rays, they each had three homers each, and they also get the Orioles asterisk on it because they were facing the Orioles, um, but they're just rubbing it in Joey Wendell's face. Um, so that's, that sucks for him. A.J. Pollock, he comes back for the Dodgers. Uh, that could be a huge piece for him. He's really good when he's healthy. He had the big hit in extras. And he's a Connecticut guy, Jim. Um I'll I'll let you go. What do you what do you like on there? Well, I'm trying to get some one guy you like. No, well, I'm trying to get some love for guys that you hate. Okay, and you've always hated Adam Frazier from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mentioned him last week as my Enfuego. You just always hated him. I think he had a bad weekend. Did he? Yeah. Well, his last stats are still good. Yeah, five hundred. I know. Getting five hundred in the last. Uh, he was six hundred last week. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's still good. Watch out for him. Tell the people about Lance Lynn a little bit. Lance Lynn is such a joy to watch. He only throws fastballs. 
He's got um, machismo and bravado. And He's a guy that speaks to your heart. Grabs his nuts after every pitch. Just hoodies? gross and sweaty. He says he wears his hoodies on days he doesn't start so that when he's on the mound, he feels not as hot. So he's just a sweat, just a gross sweat ball in the yeah. dugout for five days. It's four days. Then he goes on the mound. He's like, wow, this is nice. Yeah, this is a relief. I was fucking sweating. It's actually genius. Yeah, it's smart. It's Relieved smart. to be he, on the mound. Well, he comes out after the break versus the Astros. 11 Ks. You said he's throwing like 90 whatever. Dude, 98. I'm, yeah, 98. This is a testament to don't sign pitchers late. Alex Cobb and Lance Lynn in 2018 did not get full spring trainings. They didn't have their muscles fully fully built up and all that, and they had down years. Lance Lynn, when he's right, it's so weird to watch. Like it's this, fun. This dude's just throwing fastballs all over the place. Fastballs just at you. Yeah. So... I thought that was a fun start. And and it was like kind of a big stage for baseball because it was a Thursday after July, after the All-Star break. Only one game was happening. It was the Rangers versus the Astros. For the casual fan that tuned in, probably thinking like, oh, Astros are going to kick the Rangers' ass. Yeah. And then Lance Lynn. And then like they're in Lance Lynn's old and just flipped the whole casual fan. Lance Lynn's pitching for Texas? How many people said that on Thursday night? Um, I think the final count. Uh, Get the final count. Uh, Eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. One wow. away. One away. Damn, this guy started no saying he's like Lance. Oh, I knew that, and that would have got. Oh yeah, the, I knew. I knew that would have got the nine hundred. Yeah, he's having a really good year. That was a bit. Up- Wasn't he second in pitcher war? Um, that was a bit upsetting. And then yeah, I just uh, listed a bunch of names. Trout had a nice weekend. Uh, the Skaggs homer we talked about. Manny Machado. He has another three home run weekend. Can he's- we talk about Trout real quick? Yeah. Did you see the MLB? Per- um. Video they made for him? No. Dude, they figured out how to market Mike Trout. This is I'm gonna congratulate MLB's really? marketing team. Yeah. Uh I'm gonna play the audio. Okay. I don't know if the video will be able to see it, but listen to this. They figured out how to market Mike Trout. It's awesome. I was born to play baseball. But where I'm from, we never take anything for granted. Oh, cut out. All right. It's cool. Nice, kind of Batman vibe. They're kind of like, how do we market Mike Trout? He's not marketable. That's the marketing. Let's talk about, yeah, let's. Shut let's up, talk. Bro. Let's talk about that he can play baseball. Oh, Jimmy's phone is in a Mike Trout cycle now. No, that's um, good. I was proud of him. I was like, oh, that's good. Because if you're not watching, if you don't know baseball, you'd be intrigued. You're like, they say that guy's the best ever. Yeah. That guy. How come I haven't heard of him? How come I've never heard of him? Oh, because I'm not a weather fan. <laughs> I missed the Mike Trout weather segment. That I love. Two I mean, Mike Trout is easy to like, but I actually like that video. Yeah. No, Trout. Trout's starting to get there. Trout. It's a. Uh, only it was kind of interesting. Like Ten years of being the best ever. Starting it, to get there. It, and it's nuts that it has to be that way. But like at All Star Weekend, there was definitely like better Mike Trout vibes. Like they even in their intro for the All Star game, they were talking about your favorite player to watch, and like seventy five percent of the guys were like Mike Trout because yeah. he's probably the best to ever do it. So that's good. Um, I got Bogarts on there. We mentioned him with the Red Sox call up in twenty thirteen. He had a big weekend. Um, and then just my, my quick pitchers, Felix Pena. He was the no-hit through seven of the Angels' no-hitter. Brad Keller, only starting pitcher to go eight innings, one earned run. Uh, Soraka and Wainwright in the NL go seven scoreless. So I don't know how Fuego. old Wainwright is, but for the last five years, I've been like, Wainwright's he's, still around? He's been on the Cardinals for the past 35 seasons, which is impressive. It's very it's impressive. It's coming up on the record. Yeah, wow. Next up, next segment, who got mad? Who got mad? Who got mad today? I 
got me again. Got You're good. Again. I always won a little longer than you. Who got mad, Jim? Joey Votto got mad because the umpire extended the strike zone, struck him out on a pitch that's outside in a 16-9 to game the Reds were winning in the ninth inning. Ump definitely was like, yo, this game's been brutal and long. A lot of offense. I need to open the zone up. Votto's a guy you can't do that. He knows the zone. Right. So he was probably like, ump. I don't care what the score of the inning is. That's not a strike. I was like, yo, but Joey is a ninth. You guys are up seven. Let's get over, move on. He got tossed. The other one was, and this was a user submission or a listener submission or a breakdown fan submission. Brian Anderson got rung up on an on outside pitch as well. It was, it was close, but it was outside. And he just like stomped on the ground, like kind of like a temper tantrum. Good stomp. He gave he gave the yell away from the umpire. But he was just yelling, no, no, and jumping up and down. Like, yeah. honestly, like a two-year-old. A little tantrum. Yeah, I've but been he, there. Been there. He got mad, though. I've been there. He got mad. Um, That's basically it. There wasn't that much. This, this Sometimes this segment won't even make it. Barely made it today. First show, so we wanted to introduce it. If you've got a player on your team who got mad, reach out to us. Um, Joey Votto's contract is an albatross, and I'm not a Votto guy. Blah, blah, blah. Joey Votto's awesome. Not a fan. Big Votto fan over here. Not a fan. Walk off watch. Walk off Ooh. watch. Walk off watch. Walk off watch. Uh, Texas walked off Houston. We said that. Danny Santana with an RBI single versus Osunia. Um, did you write this? Franco Homer? Is that a walk I wrote the Franco Homer. Yeah. I'm, I, I know we are. We are very finite on our walk-offs. It has to be a walk-off. And it was a walk-off. It was yesterday. Okay. Yes. And then the A's had a wild walk-off that I want to do a breakdown of. Is runner on second, ball too short. They threw it away. And then they have so much foul territory that the ball was just rolling around forever. And the runner ran from second to home. I think it was... Um, Who's the guy whose name starts? Pinder. I think it was Chad, Chad Pinder. Pinder. I think he made it from second Chad to home. Bro. Kind of a weird feeling because you want to walk off on a home run or like you know something good. And it's like um, they just threw the ball around. I don't win. know. I kind of disagreed with you because what's one of the more famous Yankees-Mets plays in the past, what is it, 10 years, 15 years? The dropped ball, but that's so embarrassing. But that's such a fun celebration. Because that's literally like Jaws of Defeat, and yeah. now you're on the field, dan- you're dancing on their graves. It's a different kind of celebration. There needs to be some animosity, because this one, the A's celebration was kind of muted, mundane. It I was, thought they were celebrating pretty good. Yeah, but I'm an expert. They were having a young guy's celebration. I don't know it if It was they, a young guy's tempered celebration. I'll it was tem- It was tempered, yeah. yeah. But it was but a still young guy celebration. They, 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 walked, still they walked off, though. All right, next up. These are quick ones. We're running through them. Call up watch. If there's ever a big debut, we're going to try and be all over it. Jake, who do you got? Jim, we had a we had a, a former top prospect get the call. Um, Bubba Starling. Uh, uh, if you're a if you're a MLB draft person, you remember this name. He was the fifth overall pick by Kansas City out of high school. Um, I, I had the draft in front of me, but I'll tell you the guys who got drafted just after him, Jim. Um, Anthony Rendon, Francisco Lindor, Francisco, Javi Baez, George Springer. Um, and I didn't go down the list any further cause I thought that was getting mean. Um, but Hey, that's a, uh, if you think the draft doesn't matter, <laughs> uh, but Hey, Bubba Starling gets the call 26 year years old. Um, and he got his first hit in his RBI. He's playing center field, so good for him. Uh, yeah, important note here, and this comes from the beer nerd on Reddit. Yes. With the call-up of Bubba Starling, MLB has broken a 13-year drought of Bubba's. The last Bubba was Bubba Crosby Bubba in 2006, Crosby. so about time a Bubba came back into the MLB's life. Yeah, so that's uh, that's huge for the sport. Um Andres Munoz, Jimmy, gets called for the Padres, 20 years old. Um, he was an amateur free agent, signed out of Mexico. Uh, two games, 2.1 innings, zero earned runs. So welcome to the bigs, kid. Ian Gibbot. Do you think you say that name differently, Jim? Ian Gibbot. Gibbot. 
Um, he's a big boy, 250 pounds. We like that. 25 years old, 11th round pick by the Rays. One game, two inning pitch, two earn run. Hey, doesn't matter, dude. You got called up to the major leagues. Congrats. And Luis Escobar, 23 years old, amateur free agent uh, out of Colombia for Pittsburgh. Two innings pitch, four hits, but no earn runs, Jim. No so earned he's, runs. So he's incredible. So Escape artist. Uh, congrats, guys. Congratulations. All right, award. It's time, Jake. We're going to give out an Awards. award each. Awards. I'm going to give out my award. That was the 2011 MLB draft. Bubba Starling's been in the minor leagues for eight years. Doing, doing, giving it hell. Playing baseball. Yeah. Pretty nice. All right, what's, what's, your, uh, what's your first award, Jim? We have a new king. The new king? We have a new king, Gray. King Gray. King Gray. I bow to you. Do you know who gets this award? I, I'm i assuming you're giving it to John because you gave it to Sonny last time. I gave Sonny, Sonny one King Gray last time? I don't time. think you anointed him the king, but you talked about him. You haven't talked about John yet. You've talked about Sonny. Well, Sonny Gray is the King Gray. He's the new King Gray, okay? Sonny Gray and John Gray faced off the other day, Jake. Yeah. The Battle of the Grays. And check this out. Sonny Gray, seven innings pitched, five hits. Yeah. John Gray, seven innings pitched, four hits. One earned run for Sonny. Two, two earned runs for John. Just barely got beat by Sonny. Sonny wins the King Gray challenge. Sonny had nine strikeouts and three walks. John had six strikeouts, zero walks. So I think that's actually a tie in my book. Right. Tie in my book. And um, 98 pitches for John, 103 for Sonny. Pretty similar lines. It was a great King Gray battle. I can't wait for the next one. But Sonny does win the King Gray award this week. Yeah, I like that, Jim. And I, I, I wish more people would reach out to me on Twitter when the Grays are facing off because that's... Something I need to know mm -hmm. live. Um, Gandalf the Gray. Um, all right, Jim. Nice award. Um, I I think I I think I'm gonna do one award this week. Um, and I'm gonna do the newspaper award. Wow, you've been dying to give this out. Been dying to give out the newspaper award. Yeah, dying. Yeah. Um, goes to your mailman. There's actually two winners. Okay, but you just opened up with you're just going to give one award out. One award to two people. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You talked about the Gray brothers for hours, even though they're not brothers. So they have to say, like, we won an award together. Yeah, yeah, and they will. Okay. And they will. Okay. Um, Jim, I'm going to Daniel Murphy. He's been hot. And Jose Altuve. Both hot. One so weird. One, not weird. Extra, extra read all about it, Jim, because these guys are hitting for extra base hits. Daniel yeah. Murphy over the weekend, three doubles, two homers. Colorado would love a huge second half from Daniel Murphy. He, uh, he was kind of meh the first half if he can get a little of that course field. And when Daniel Murphy gets hot, he's got to get hot. Well, he needs to cut his hair because he's he, weird and everyone. He's out. the guy that gets hot. And he we, looks like the boyfriend from Roseanne right now, and no one likes it. Let that hair ride, D. Murph. And Jose Altuve, he had four extra base hits over the three games he played in, um, or the last three games he played in. Two doubles, two home runs, six RBIs. Um, Altuve got hurt in the first half for a while. And I think if it was he, his heart, right? Broke breakup or something broken like that? Broken heart, I think. Yeah. And, uh, if Altuve's back for those Strohs, man, I mean, I mentioned before the Verlander effect of how it changed baseball history. Jose Altuve was... The Astros have had a lot of injuries themselves. Altuve, Springer. If Altuve gets it going and has an Altuve-type second half, Houston hot take will make the playoffs. Okay. All right, we have one final segment. This episode ran a little longer than usual. We had a big a big chunk of the World Series chunk. editions, and we also did a little longer of an intro than usual. We do have one more segment, and if you're still listening, we thank you so much because this is going to be, I think, our most fun segment. It's called Elevator Talk. Elevator Talk. We have a wheel. On the wheel is all 30 teams. We are going to spin the wheel. Whatever team it lands on, we do get some omissions because we've talked about some we will talk about some teams in the regular show. We're like, ah, we talked about them too much. But whatever team it lands on, we will spend two minutes 
f- going to research, finding out what uh, you need to know in case you're stuck in an elevator with a fan of that team and you want to be able to have some casual conversation, yeah. be informed. Are you ready, Jake? Yeah, let's do it. Here's the here we go. The wheel is spinning. Always nervous. Spinning, and we are landing on the Houston Astros. We just kind of segued into it, didn't yeah. we? Wow, perfect. Good job, the wheel. Houston Astros won the World Series in 2017. They got. You can talk about that for sure. You can talk about that. Oh, I remember. You think we're going to run it back this year? Yep. They lost in the ALCS to Boston. They are a playoff team. They're well, one of the favorites right now. It's if you're if you see an Astros hat in the elevator, you go, "Wow, it's it's got to be the it's got to be Stros, Yanks or Dodgers this year, huh?" Yep. You got to like drop it. one of those for sure. Altuve, all the stuff I just said about him, he was hurt. Hopefully he has a big second yep. half for you, right? Yep. 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 So they uh they did have for them a rough month of June. Sure. They were 15 and 13 in June. That's not the so best. Maybe you stay away from June. Stay away from June. Say like Guriel. Yeah, pick it up. Guriel. Guriel's great. been going nuts. If you want to talk about young guys, who's that? Jordan. Jordan Alvarez. Strong, People love dude. him. How strong Big is boy. Jordan? That's what you're saying. Oh the How strong is Jordan? What do you think he benches? Be real with me. Two ninety. I'm not asking you. I'm just saying for the elevator. Oh, for the elevator. Not two ninety. His arms are too long. He's a baseball player. Um, no, just once. That's his max. One time. And then I, I think. Oh no, no. What you're. Uh, when you're slapping ass and getting out of the elevator, how do you guys get off an elevator? By the way, um, usually crawl. I think you just I'm so afraid. You just say, "Hey, seven games set. It's going to be tough for them to beat. We're going to have Verlander three times, Garrett Cole two times. Going to be tough." Yeah, that's your slap ass on the exit. Who's their third? That's the pitcher. If I've you, got everyone in the elevator wearing baseball pants, so it's cool. If you if you wanted if you're like running to a real Ooh, Astros I fan, like a deeper question would be like, who do you think our number three is right now? You think Wade Miley's real? Because it's Verlander and Cole, and then I mean they got Framber. He's not doing much. They Framber got Colin work. McHugh. He's not doing much right now. It's looking like Wade Miley as of now. It's looking like Wade Miley. So yeah, if you run into national, who's our third right now in the yeah. playoffs? Verlander and Cole. They you got think it. Miley could hold up in the playoffs. They looking to trade for a third? Is that what there is on their mind? You know, maybe. Tony Kemp short. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. That's they needed someone that can have a conversation with Altuve at eye level. That's why they brought Tony. And Kemp that in. Brantley signing worked out. You'd say that too. You can say that. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. Bye. Talking thanks Astros. For getting, thanks for uh, riding the elevator with us Talking and making Astros. me talk to you about baseball. Talking Astros. That was that. This was Talking Baseball. First episode. If you listen to it on YouTube and watch the show, we appreciate it. If you're a Patreon and you tuned in and out live, we appreciate that. If uh, in the future, if you want to be live, we will probably have time to answer some questions from the chat. If you go to patreon.com slash John Boy Media, you will find yourself there. $2 a month supports, gets you a live access and a chance to win some jerseys and really just supports everything we're, we're doing. And we appreciate that. All right. I think that's it, Jake. Any last words? Big series coming up. The only one I know, and because it's close to my heart, is four games versus the Yankees and Rays. And both team, the Yankees can kind of put away the Rays, or the Rays can force their way into a scary situation for Yankees fans. Big series for NL East teams, NL Central teams, and the Texas Rangers to see if they're going to sell. Yeah, the Reds, Pirates, and Rangers. Are there anything else? Are there any other good? Like, who are, where are the Dodgers going now? The years. I should have planned this if we want to do yeah. it. Dodgers, Phillies. That could be fun. But there's no divisional stuff. Yeah. yeah. We're out. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, see you later.